No tour is complete without a visit to the back storage rooms of any office circa 1970. Before computers were common, we stored important papers on shelves of binders. Each binder held a set of papers for a particular purpose or project. Think of GitHub as a room full of binders, and a repository as a single binder, storing the important papers for a particular project. Or we can think of a repository as a storage box. Each box represents a separate repository. The repository stores the commit history for our project files. For every application or website we build, we define a local repository for its source code and other files. This local repository resides in the working folder on your computer. We use a local repo for a local backup of our code and to track our code revisions. Remote repositories can be hosted anywhere, such as a company's network. But the most common place for remote repositories is GitHub. We use a remote repository for an off-site backup of our commit history and to optionally share our code and collaborate with others. Let's walk through the process of initializing a repository. How we initialize or create a repository depends on which comes first. We can initialize the local repository first, or we can start with the remote repository first. Let's start by walking through initializing the local repository first. Initializing a local repository first is a common scenario, especially when starting a new project that we work on by ourselves. We have a great idea for a new project, let's say a recipe website. We start by creating a working folder for our project. This is where we'll create and edit our files. We then use GitHub Desktop or VS Code to initialize a local repository on our computer. The exact steps for this depend on the tool, and we'll try out both GitHub Desktop and VS Code a bit later in this course. The initialization process creates a hidden folder named .get in our working folder. This .get folder is our local repository. Once the repository is created, Git will notice any changes to the files in our working folder. We commit those changes to this repository. If we want to store a copy of our repository on GitHub, we use GitHub Desktop or VS Code to publish our local repo to GitHub. This creates the remote repository and copies our commit history to that repository. The remote repository can be public and accessible to anyone with an internet connection. Or it can be private if we aren't ready to share it yet or are working on a private company project. We now have both a local and a remote repository for our project. We then use GitHub Desktop or VS Code to keep the local and remote repositories in sync. This is the common set of steps we use when initializing a local repository first. For the second scenario, a remote repository for the project already exists on GitHub, and we want to start working on that project. We use GitHub to clone the remote repository to our computer. We'll see the exact steps for this when we try it out a bit later. The result is a working folder for our project and a local repo in that folder. The cloning process copies down the entire commit history from the remote repo to that local repo. It also copies the files from the latest commit to the working folder. We can then edit these files or create new ones in that folder. Similar to the prior scenario, once both repositories are in place, we can use GitHub Desktop or VS Code to help us keep the local and remote repositories in sync. The remote repository on GitHub is referenced by a full URL. Because that's a long name to reference, the remote repo is often given an alias or nickname, which by default is origin. It gets that name because it's often the repository that a project originates from. We'll see that alias name come up, especially when we start to use GitHub Desktop and VS Code. Before we move on, I want to point out a few additional ways to get code from a remote repository on GitHub. We've just covered how to use clone to copy a remote repository to our working folder, 
Use Clone if you have access to push changes to the remote repository. But you may work on a project with a repository you don't have authority to push changes to. This may be true when working on open source projects. In that case, you first fork the repository. This makes a copy of the remote repository under your GitHub account, so you own the forked copy. You then clone your forked remote repository to create a local repository in your working folder. As you make changes, you sync the changes to your fork. When the changes are ready to be incorporated into the main project repository, you issue a pull request. The pull request asks the owner of the repository to pull in the changes from your fork. In GitHub, there is also an option to download a repository as a zip file. By default, that zips up the files from the latest commit and downloads it to your downloads folder. Unzip the files to view or edit them. This process does not create a local repository. Use this option if you just want some code from GitHub and don't want a repository. When using GitHub, you'll often see these three options. Clone, fork, or zip. So, for each project, we often work with two GitHub repositories, a local repository in the working folder on your computer. This repository stores every commit. And a remote repository, often stored on GitHub. This repository can be public or private and has a copy of every commit. When starting out, we normally create one of these repositories and then copy it to create the other. Publish is the process of copying a local repository to a remote hosting service, such as GitHub. This creates the remote repository, and all of the commit history is copied to that repository. Clone is the process of copying a remote repository to a local repository on your computer. Cloning initializes the local repository, copies the entire commit history to that local repository, and by default, copies the files from the latest commit to the working folder. Now that we've covered how to create the two repositories, let's talk more about commits and keeping both repositories in sync.